Hey, hi, and welcome to the Plo Newsroom, episode 14, uh, recorded March 10th, 2023. You're listening to Philip Bauer from Munich and my partner in crime. Hello, Fred van Dijk from Rotterdam. Hi, Philip. How are you? Are you uh, well again? You were, we postponed yeah. the last recording because yeah, you I was, were sick. Yeah, I was, you have this joke in the Netherlands, a bit of a battle or, or twi uh, how do you call it, a fight between men and women, where they say, oh, when men get ill, they are so, how do you call it, puny. So we call it the, the men flu, literally. Men are schnupfen. Men are schnupfen, genau. Yes. Oh, you ha skip yeah, the South of Deutsch. A, yeah, it's a, it's a gr great meme. There's yeah, a, so I had, nice I, video I, I had the men flu. I was not ill, but I was not feeling good. I was feeling lousy and it took like almost a week to get out of it again. All right. So I, I try to do a bit of work. I try to do some stuff uh, for for the for my uh, uh, blown phone uh, blown community stuff, but it was like dragging on, uh, being on the couch, and I I get this nose nose throat nose throat blah blah going on. So yeah, let, let's, men let's flu. not go into no, them. let's not go into <laughs> men flu men flu for a week and horrible horrible. But uh, yeah. we postponed it for a week, and now I really have to. So I might I hope I, I will pause the the, the microphone when I have a sneezing attack, but. I, I think I think I'm good to go now. Okay. So well, and we've got so much news, Philip. There's so oh much has happened in only one month. Yeah. And uh, we're just for for those who are listening for the first time, this is obviously a podcast about Plone, a content management system yeah. written in Python. We're part of that. That's why we're doing that. And uh, you can find us on plone.org/newsroom. And uh, we have yeah, we have a lot of news for you. Um, <laughs> let's let's just jump into it because we have a hard deadline. I think you have a client meeting at two o'clock. So yeah, so um, we've got one and a half that. one and a half hours left. Okay, mm, let's no 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 let's, let's try it. not to be let's that. try to keep it to one hour. Yeah, yeah we have a new release. Um, nothing too yeah, fancy. Yeah, release news. Release but, news. Uh, there is uh, Plone six zero two is finally mm. out. Uh, there's a new news item on Plone org. We're not going into details. It's got a couple of nice bug fixes, a couple of important ones if you're working on the bleeding edge. Uh, but other than that, it's a part of the regular um, release schedule, which says we're going to have a release every two months of, of Plone 6.0. Is that right? Or is it a monthly release, actually? I never can remember that. Yeah, so I'll just to practice, I'll start sharing my screen. Excellent. Uh, if it works, if it works, to show you the Plone Org homepage. Indeed, we have a, a, a kind of a, a monthly release schedule now for yeah, Plone monthly. 6. And I chatted and to my colleague and also a release manager, Maurits, uh, uh, this morning, just to verify. So in this year, the, the Plone 5.2 releases are slowly winding down because it's, I mean, Plone 6 is now uh, the, the, the main uh, stable new version. So he, Maurits has planned to do th uh, probably three other releases uh, uh, this year, uh, uh, April, uh, somewhere, I think before uh, summer maybe, uh, or, or in summer, and then one at the end of, uh, uh, in autumn, uh, to have two more, two or three more service releases. Yeah, and then we're slowly uh, getting uh, Plone 5.2 into, uh, into a security only mode, I think. Uh, yep. For the remainder of its uh, of its time, and Plone five two is already with us for some years. Yeah. But as we talked extensively in the last uh, uh, in one of the last episodes, uh, we are really yeah being pushed a bit by the Python uh, 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 more regular Python updates as well, where Plone has to follow uh, with the Python support underneath. Yeah. The, the more important thing is that we're sl not for six oh two, but slowly we're picking uh, we're following the Python. Releases uh, that means we'll add support for uh, Python to twelve, which is uh, slowly coming along, mm -hmm. and that will see some significant speed improvements, even more uh, on on the Python side. So Plone will benefit hugely <coughs> from that. And um, three eleven uh, was much, always yeah. It, it was three eleven is already great. I'm <coughs> using three eleven in most uh, almost all projects since I'm doing a lot of Plone six stuff. Um, but um, I read in the uh, Python announcements that uh, 3.12 is going to see even more stuff uh, on the speed front, which is good. Yeah. So just a quick recap. Uh, we have, uh, of course, uh, some info on Plone.org about the Plone 6 release. I'm just showing here. We've got latest news now with a Plone 6 to 02 release, which is a kind of more talkative news item. But you should always check the announcement from our release manager. This is the, the content type that Maurits creates for every new release, which has the details, highlights, and also for every package. I'm just showing this now once again for people. 
uh, we changed logs from almost all packages here. There's one small exception with Plone Mockup and static resources that should also be in here in the next releases to have some changes there. But you can really figure out all the detailed notes here. And there's a bit of more talkative what we changed. Yeah. So here, some bigger changes for uh, 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 602 release was not that big, but Plone REST API, Plone REST have had some features. Many packages had deprecations warning fixed. Uh, uh, also, these are efforts done on uh, in the Innsbruck sprint, which we're going to talk about, the Alpine City sprint. Uh, the patterns for Classic UI have had some fixes, translation updates, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Oh, keep up nice. to date. That's the, yes. the, that's the, the baseline. Yeah, uh, yeah. Try to keep, keep up, up to date, to date uh, in your deployments. Otherwise, you'll run into bugs that have already been fixed. And that will be a waste of time. Exactly. Uh, also, there is uh, a new release for 5.2, uh, just maintenance, as Fred mentioned. Uh, yeah, but and it was, I think it was released at the end of January. So I think yeah, yeah, that, we exactly mentioned it in the last yeah, one. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Uh, but there is, uh, there's been a new branch uh, in the world uh, the, for the 6.1 release. Uh, it hasn't seen lots of stuff yet, but there are plans, uh, especially on the classic side of, uh, for example, updating uh, some bootstrap and JavaScript stuff on the classic side, which would be a breaking change. So it needs to be in 6.1. Uh, so work has started on that front. Um, we'll keep you posted once yeah, there I think is I'll, anything I'll, to show, actually. Uh, uh, what I heard, uh, we still have to set up the CI for, uh, uh, for 6.1 as well. So it's just, it's just freshly uh, made branches and, and some uh, maintenance uh, releases of, of packages where the current version is on, a, on, a, on the previous main version for Plone 6 support and then we'll fork something for or create the branch for 6.1. So that's yeah. still working over. So, Philip, um, other news? Yeah, we have a couple of other news items. Uh, one is uh, re related to trainings. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you, you may know that since the conference in Arnhem and uh, I have I did the Mastering Clone training every conference. And um, I don't know, <laughs> maybe I ran out of steam. Uh, but uh, I'm, I'm happy to announce that Katya Seuss is taking over uh, giving the training and maintain, maintaining, uh, mastering the maintaining of mastering clone, uh, which is a, a huge task. And uh, I thank her very much. She did a lot of work in the last uh, two years, uh, maybe three years. I can't remember since the pandemic has yeah, ru ruined my calendar. Ruined the yearly. Uh... Yes. So she she's very well versed in all the back end and front end <laughs> stuff. She's much better at uh, Velto development. Uh, than I am, so she's uh, she's she's the right person to take that over, and I'm happy that she does that. And uh, I'm I'm obviously uh, <laughs> there to help and assist if my uh, assistance in in any way needed. But um, yeah, go Katya. And yeah, also I have uh, I, to, to to mention that I had uh, uh, I mean I've been on and off helping a bit with training as well. I still remember fondly where we kind of reshuffled because the training was originally created by you for your customers for some of your customers internally. You kind of open sourced it, and then at one memorable location in Sorrento, uh, we kind of with a few people we reshuffled, re and and then the mastering clone training was was evolved and evolved. And last year I had the pleasure to assist Katja uh, on the last day because you made a new uh, uh, exciting uh, new training about migrations for one afternoon. And there, yeah, you were kind of blocked. So, and indeed Katja uh, 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 took over that day, and I helped her a bit with the backend because it's always. It's, it's nice to have at least two people uh, in front of the room when you're with bigger audiences, because then I can, can ask some small que uh, questions from, from someone or help with an error, and Katja can continue on with the main story. So that's, that's also how we, I think, do most of the bigger uh, uh, trainings at PlonConf. Uh, the Volto training, for example, was also led by Tiberiu and Victor uh, as a team. Um, so, yeah. Go go, Katja! Uh, I will probably have uh, have uh, uh, will, uh, and other people will will assist. Just like I said, the, uh, the trainings are also a team effort. Yeah, they they have been from the beginning. I started out with Patrick, my former colleague, uh, did the first conference in Arnhem. Um, in 2012, that's like 10 years ago. So I started, <laughs> I, I wrote that like the year before that uh, for a, a client project. 
and then I it evolved like it, it's huge now. And there are so many other trainings, and we're curating at the moment. The training team is curating uh, trainings. There's a, a, a issue if you if you feel if you ever have given a training or written or contributed to a training, uh, feel free to uh, ship in with your opinion, and maybe uh, we'll get that done. But there is more news. Yeah. Uh, we have uh, three events coming up. Uh, one is actually pretty uh, soon. Uh, on April 26th, there's going to be World Plone Day. Again. It, yeah, again, Yearly. every, as every cool. year. It's a global online event, 24 hours of YouTube videos uh, about Plone and all things related to it or um, somehow familiar with it. Um, so if you have anything to share, uh, please submit a talk for World Plone Day 2023. Uh, there is a news item and a form on plon.org. Yeah. Um, there... There's a banner now on the homepage. Uh, if you did, you submit your talk yet, Philip? No, I haven't. I, I haven't submitted anything yet. I'm still <laughs> on, on the fence. fence. Yeah, yeah I still. Uh... I'm doing everything every. I'm, I'm doing something, not everything, obviously. I'm doing something every year. So, and maybe maybe that's going to be a pattern because I'm I'm really looking forward to going to a plone conference and actually sitting in a training and learning something from someone else instead of trying to force my ideas on someone else so maybe I'm doing the same on World plone day just consuming what the com com uh, community produces you could you um, could you could hide under a stone and then in 3 years follow your own mastering plone training yeah that would be, that would <laughs> no, be no, fun. don't do it don't do that <laughs> we need you philip we need you yeah so World plone day is coming up uh, uh, if you have an idea for for a talk or something uh, else it can be anything it can be use case it can be uh something interesting uh, technically information architecture uh, low level uh, uh local events are organized by some uh, uh, uh plant companies in their, in their own country and also very important it doesn't have to be your uh, the, the 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 global denglish or 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 euro english or whatever english uh, uh, dialect uh, uh, you tend to speak in it can be also be in your own language because we really want to show that plone is used worldwide and so if if you you could there are italian talks there have been romanian talks which i last that yeah, was last year. There was something very interesting, and I didn't understand it. I was like, <laughs> "Oh, what is? Oh, this is cool. What is he showing?" But why can't I? Uh, but that's that's the whole point of it. Uh, uh, blown worldwide. Yeah, it's it's, it's not uh, not called uh, I don't know German Plown Day. It's uh, or English Plown Day. It's World no, Plown Day. It's World Plown Day. Uh, I, uh, my, my talk. I'm going to do something information architecture uh, this time. I'm going to talk about. Uh, the, the thing that with Plone, normally Plone is, is built on, normally if you open the, the editor, it's hierarchy. You create uh, uh, folders, pages, or you create folders, and that tends to show through in, in how your site appears because then you also have this hierarchy. What I'm going to want to talk about and present is some solutions to break out of that hierarchy and, and do more relational stuff. It's not really really end advanced, but it's, it's showing some stuff that especially people beginning with Plone or editors beginning with Plone uh, might not uh, uh, realize that that's also possible. Yeah, relations. Um, I'm all for it. I'm already looking forward to your talk. You already, uh, you got me there. <laughs> But there's more. Uh, we have uh, the Beethoven Sprint is coming up in yes. May, May 15 to 19, as far as I know. Um, I'm definitely going again. It's going to be in Bonn, organized by Kid Concept. It was really great last year, and I'm very much looking forward to going this uh, again. The, web, the announcement is not on the website on Plon.org yet, so guys, um, get it together. May is not that far away, and people will line up to register. Are you I think, coming? I think that I'm, yes, I'm going. I'm really going. Sure. Excellent. Cool. Meet you there. And there is a date for the Plone Conference this year. It's going to be in October, October 2nd to 8th in Ibar, which is in Spain, the Basque country part of uh, Spain. country. So you don't go to France uh, uh, by accident. Uh, very much looking forward to that. I'm, I'm, I checked travel arrangements there and that's a bit tricky but i found out that you can easily go by train to bordeaux and then take a bus from there there's a public bus going at least to san sebastian uh <laughs> if i have to walk from san sebastian to ibar i haven't found out public transport websites in uh in uh, basque country are 
I don't know, maybe non-existent, but I'm very much looking forward to information on the website. Uh, we're going to going... talk about the website, are we? The website, the PlanConf website. Yes, eventually we're going to talk a lot ar around around the PlanConf website, uh, uh, indeed. So is, now I'm going to say something very silly, but the whole the pilgrims path isn't that going on the north path, or is that going to another? No, that, that that's close by. I think it goes through San Sebastian uh, to to uh, Santiago uh, de Compostela, something which is not Santiago that de far. Compostela path. It's isn't not that, that far away. I, I, yeah, I, I should have I should have prepared but, uh, that this before. I should have looked it up before uh, shouting. Uh, I think it's in the yeah, it's that route. It's on. It's on. Maybe on the route there. You could. I'm not yeah. sure yet. I, I have the luxury for the Bonn sprint that I can hop on a train here in Rotterdam and be in Bonn uh, uh, with with what, only one uh, change in Utrecht. I think directly, uh, uh, and then it's a 15 minute walk from the main station of Bonn uh, to the locations of the uh, where the Git Concert office is. Yeah, bus country is um, maybe we'll just take the flight there to Bilbao, or then you still have to get to Ibar from Bilbao. I, I, I couldn't find anything, but I, okay, I, yeah. I like I like public transport, we like so, so I'll, I'll try, take the train yeah. to Bodo probably. Yeah. Okay, let's let we had a sprint already this year, and I wanted yes. to go. I got sick. You were there, Alpine City Sprint. Yes. Uh, what happened? Tell us about it. What happened? Oh, now my part. Yes, I was already afraid for this. The last, <laughs> it's because we, we, we kind of, we, we did the last TPN very shortly before uh, the, 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 the Alpine City Sprint in Innsbruck, uh, uh, which was held uh, February 5th or 8th to 11th, I think. And we did this recording because I was really like, Philip, we have to re do the TPN now because otherwise if we do it the week after it, we'll have two months of news and uh, so but now we have indeed alpine city the sprint was great uh like every year uh, i really have to correct myself here because uh, uh in the previous episode i said it was organized by uh, uh jens klein and christine uh, baumgartner from klein and partner that was not entirely true because they got a lot of help and also uh, 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 the location itself was provided by uh, their friend uh, uh, and also former colleague uh, and apprentice, which I'm going to talk about, is Robert Niederreiter. He has his own small, uh, uh, small, yeah, no, no, it was quite impressive. I'll come to that later. He has his own offices in uh, uh, in the east part of, of Innsbruck, and we used it's a kind of offer sharing, uh, 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 offer sharing system, uh, uh, four or five buildings together. I think it's called a kind of bit of science center uh, as well. He has his offices there. He has a, a very cool company who does a lot of things with multimedia, uh, yeah, custom I electronics. Uh, I, I walked through his office and I complimented. I was like, wow, you've got like, like five man caves here together with uh, 3D printers, a, a small storage area. Uh, 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 really cool, really cool to see that uh, 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 last life. And he facilitated the sprint because in one of the other buildings, we had a very large conference room. You can see one of a few of, uh, of the images on plan.org where there's a, a sprint out report as well. Uh, and we we we, uh, we we met in that larger conference room for most of the week, and we had lunch. Uh, and then we walked uh, outside. It's always good to have a to have a best of fresh air walk. So we walked to uh, Robert's office in in uh, in small groups to have lunch. We had excellent lunch again by the same good friend of Christina, I think, who has been doing the catering uh, for years now for the Alpine City Sprint. So we had a very good lunch. Um, yeah, and we hacked away for five days. <clears throat> on, on many, many, what many things. Do? Yeah, what did, what, did, what did we do? What did I do? That's a bit complicated because this, normally when I'm going to a sprint, I'm doing and listening and talking with everybody. And at the end of the week, I had the feeling I didn't do anything when I actually did, did a lot, but, but a bit, I call it spread over. And this year I really focused. I, I uh, got to sit next to Erico. Uh, Andre, our well-known uh, uh, president that we shall name again, again in this TPN, because I was sitting next to him for most of the week at, uh, at the Alpine City Sprint. And we, we kind of worked back and forth. So I was in a small group with Erico, with uh, uh, Maurits and Jill uh, doing a lot of CI, uh, uh, CI related stuff and improvements there. Next to Erico was Victor uh, doing, uh, uh, leading the Volto uh, development, but we also interfaced with, with Victor uh, and talked with him about stuff because of what Erico and I were working on. And many other people did many other things, which I'm going to very quickly list through now because the sprint out report is on plone.org. Oh, we just chatted before the TPN. It doesn't really contain 
that much meat of what technically was done. It was more about the community uh, 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 things that happened there, like the excursions we made, and uh, we had a forum talk, which I'm going to talk about. Um, yeah, so I wasn't really. I was finally getting some focus now this year on the on the. But then again, I, I have less to tell or inside stories about what other people were working on. So very quickly, um, we had an excursion on Wednesday to Swarovski Kristallwelten which is, uh, uh, I think, a quite, rather well-known brand of, uh, 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 of jewelry. And it was founded 150, 180 years ago by a guy moving from uh, 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 somewhere more Eastern Europe to, to, to Austria. And it's a, it, I didn't know it was there. They have a huge museum there. Uh, uh, and it also uh, gave this year's uh, theme to the Alpine City Sprint, uh, Let Blown Shine Like a Diamond. It was... Cool. It was interesting. What I kind of missed at the, at the excursion was that they didn't really show how they manufactured it because that was, I asked a lady there after the museum uh, uh, exit, like, why don't you show any? No, no, that's secret. We can't do that because then the Chinese uh, 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 industry will copy uh, what we do, yada, yada. And I was like, okay, I've heard that before. I worked at another company like 10 to 20 years ago. And there we also had a factory museum and they were also like, no, 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 no. We can't show anything of the production process because otherwise uh, 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 all the Asian countries will copy our model toy train uh, 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 manufacturing secrets and we're out of business. So I've, I've dealt with that before. I worked at a model toy train uh, 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 a company a long time ago. Mm -hmm. And then we said, look, if you don't show how complicated, how complex the production of, of whatever you try to sell is, then people will find it expensive. If you show that it takes like, it, there are 200 to 300 parts in a small model toy train, uh, uh, and it's made from, from a, a mixture of, of different metals, and it takes a huge lot of process, then people really appreciate what's going on there, and then they will find it uh, uh, not that expensive anymore, or they, they know what the worth of it is. And I must say, I'm, now that I'm telling this, it's the same like w what we're doing with Blown uh, and the development process. Oh, it's easy to create a, a CMS. I mean, CMS is an afterthought, right? You, you have a complex web app and then you'll add some, some, some a CMS module there and then you're done. Yeah, okay, maybe if, if CMS, if, if content management is, if you only have two pages, but we, we, that's what we're doing also, I think the last one and a half years now is showing what's going on and, and how much there is about also like a s simple CMS system. Yeah, so that was we're, we're, we, we're open source. So um, the Chinese we're, are, ha we're happy if Chinese uh, developers bring it on. clone, uh, Indeed. download, clone from GitHub yeah. and contribute. So yeah. we're so, not trying to sell the product, just the services. We sell the community. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so things people worked on, uh, uh, because I got it from the sprint out report, uh, um, or the detailed sprint, uh, also, uh, the, the, how you call it, the, the working document we have to, to organize sprints. Plot add-on gallery, really, really cool because I contacted you yesterday evening about an add-on I couldn't find. Uh, uh, the URL is, uh, uh, I should, I should just show it. I'll start, uh, should I start screen sharing? Yeah, I'll start screen sharing. Sure, you can Mike there Stappen has been working on a cool front end app that interfaces, I think, directly with uh, a, a PyPi. Yeah, PyPi. It, it parses PyPi, it drops it into its own database, and then does some some parsing. Yeah. Searching. So let's start my screen again, and then I'll probably won't quit with it until I'm done. So, PAG. Pag, or how am I going to pronounce that in German, Dutch, or English? Buchstabien. Clone it, shows, it shows really cool stuff. So I can just type here in uh, uh, export. Im ah, there's our, your add-on, Philip. Our our new. So you can search for a stick. You can limit to clone versions, and you can also limit to package type. And for the curious people, there's something interesting here about the distribution which we're also going to talk about in one of the next parts. So this is a really cool new front end that queries all the classifiers, which I found out for the, 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 the one I was looking for uh, uh, yesterday evening, and I even asked you online, is not in there because it's missing a classifier of add-on, but it really quickly really shows also with all the versions there, uh, uh, and it shows you all the metadata that's there pulled from uh, uh, PyPI, a really cool new search interface for all kinds of plan add-ons. Mm -hmm. 
So that's that part. Um, it's a it's a nice uh, it's it's a nice companion to Awesome Clone, which is a curated list, so completely different. This pulls in everything that is on Pipey that is tagged with the right tags. Um, they're not called tags. They're what's the name actually? Uh, can't remember. Whatever they have classifiers, yeah, classifiers. And um, whereas uh, Awesome Clone and Awesome Volto are uh, on GitHub repositories, and you can submit yeah. an add-on. Uh, I'm showing it, it. It has to be awesome to be in there. And uh, the Plone add-on gallery doesn't really uh, care if it's awesome as long as it has the right classifiers, which is great because it has a lot of stuff in there. Yeah. So um, now I'm going to stop my screen share, and we're back uh, like this. So uh, a lot of uh, nice one. Photo. Uh, Victor led a lot of photo core development that went completely passed by me, but a lot of uh, uh, improvements and stuff for the upcoming Photo 17 release uh, was done. Oh, release news. I totally forgot. There's a first or the second Photo uh, uh, 17 alpha is out now. Which but also, also on, on, the, on the 16 front, a lot of stuff happened. The teaser yeah, yeah, block yeah, yeah. was merged uh, and it's part of 16 already. Yes, yeah, so colleagues of Victor, uh, 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 Stefan and Jacob were there and they worked on, the, on, on getting more uh, blocks ready for integration in core. The teaser block, indeed, as you mentioned, work on the grid block was done. Um, Plone architecture. So we have been, uh, uh, this is also uh, something that has been, we've been working on for years now in the community. Um, we want to kind of separate or identify different parts of the whole Plone import story because we have a lot of packages and many packages are importing functionality from other packages that are a bit low, lower level but if you we saw some some screenshots of uh, of a dynamically generated uh, uh, dependency graph of plone and if you look at it it's like one big plate of spaghetti bolognese um and we uh, uh, jens klein is leading that effort together with others to identify like three layers of where the functionality of plone should be and that you have clear separation points of who is importing from who because we have uh, the issue also of cyclic dependencies uh, uh, in in the system and plone base is one of the uh, parts that uh, is that solution and another one is that when we get this uh, done and, and fixed then it will also be the uh, a kind of requirements to start separating out the uh, surface side html rendering that's now kind of all over the place still in our uh, in, in our Plone server, in our Plone backend uh, uh, package, so that we can start separating out uh, the view rendering and, uh, uh, and the HTML, server-side service uh, 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 generated HTML to have more leaner uh, 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 backends for uh, Volto and for Classic UI. That, that doesn't make the backends faster because the, the code in uh, for server-side rendering uh, is is not used if you use it uh, the REST API, but the installation process might be faster and it's less less code to maintain. And if if you're working with it as a uh, ad, as a developer and you're trying to parse the code base, um, a lot of stuff is just not there that might distract you from figuring out how something works. So yep. that's a nice thing to have. And, and at another... some point, maybe we can actually drop it all together if the community goes uh, forward uh, with migrating everything to Volto, I'm sure that's going to be a couple of years. But um, I've heard uh, large universities migrating to Volto slowly. Yeah, so that's 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 definitely something what go what's what will be happening. But we saw that I mean that's why Volto uh, was started, and that's why before Volto uh, we had Plone REST API already since like ten thousand ten or ten thousand eleven or even before, and a lot of uh, custom front ends have been built in the last twelve years. Uh, on, uh, with Plone as, a, as the back end, as the content API and using REST API to build uh, uh, interfaces with Vue, with Angular, uh, uh, with custom JavaScript uh, from that library. So that's nothing new. But I think still think Classic UI and Volto will exist for a long time because there are huge installations uh, 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 using the classic yes. server-side rendering. Uh, Bone 6 has had huge updates uh, to also the bootstrap uh, uh, and, and the whole uh, JavaScript interactive patterns there, the whole mock-up uh, pattern slip uh, story. So yeah, classic UI will be good to go for many years as well. And it really depends on your use case. And I'm in the middle of that with some of my customers to discuss about, to talk about that. Like, hey, what are your, your requirements for the front end? Do you need a lot of interactivity? Do you need a kind of web app functionality? 
um, or is like the, the HTML canvas good enough for you? Because that still also offers uh, uh, a lot of benefits like speed. Yeah, we're, uh, we're going to have this discussion over and over, I think. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I have that with clients uh, asking <laughs> me, okay, w which which front end should we sh use for that project? And it's always, it's, it's a complex decision, uh, depending on a lot of uh, um, um, op uh, things that you have to consider, like migration, uh, pain, uh, already Whoops. developed code, uh, what's the future and what's the target audience and and the long levity of the project and whatever Lot and also what's your what's your, your 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 development life uh, cycle uh, between versions because it really depends if you upgraded your plone start in in 2012 or, or if you upgraded in 2015 because 2015 we had plone 5 so if if larger sites i, I see are mostly having a complete rebuild somewhere between 5 to 8 years and then, yeah, if you have just upgraded and then the new major version is coming around, uh, you have it's better to wait a few times. You're not going to, to redo everything just because there was a Bootstrap 4 instead of Bootstrap 3 uh, uh, released. Uh, and you and you built the site on Bootstrap 3 just before uh, that version of the of the front end library uh, came uh, was published. Obviously, so let, let's move on. What what else was yeah, done? Yeah, let's get a, Anything... let's move, get a bit quicker because otherwise I yeah we have like a feature time. coming up. <laughs> yes, I'm postponing the feature. Do you see you see my trick? No. Yeah. Um, so architecture de definitions, uh, uh, set 3C form improvements have been made. Uh, documentation has been worked on. Uh, Mike is also maintaining uh, Plunk CLI, and he I think he did uh, a bit of work on the, on updating the templates in there and the system. Uh, Stefan Antonelli was there to upgrade Plone Theme Tokyo uh, to uh, the latest greatest Plone Six, and also I think Bootstrap updates there. Uh, which is a really interesting theme to uh, to to uh, to check. Uh, Plone theme by Tokyo. It was created, I think, around the Plone conference in Tokyo in 2018 when they started it. But it, interesting is it has also an alternative implementation of the toolbar. Yeah, it's a separate package. The the toolbar yeah. that he wrote. So that's also cool to see. Uh, I think he uh, has some... a talk at the last World Plone Day about that. I'm not sure. Yeah, we'll check it out because it really shows the diversity again and the flexibility of Plone where you can say, look, this is the default Plone bar that is in the core distribution. But if you have other requirements from your clients or what you think yourself, uh, how, how things should work, uh, you can re-implement it. Um, so, Zoop. So, uh, uh, Michael Howitz uh, was also present, uh, one of the Zoop maintainers. Uh, he did also some uh, looking at Python 3.12 already uh, together with others he fixed uh, github uh, 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 action setup also for the zoop uh, 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 releases are using more and more github actions um, and my, uh, the guy sitting next to me erico uh, did some really cool stuff on clone distributions and that's also something that has been a returning uh, uh, a discussion topic on many uh, uh, community events over the years and conferences the core may, of let me let me su suggest that we move that topic to the next TPN and maybe go in in a bit more depth in there. Yeah, because it really it's something that's but it's really cool that we have a kind of basic minimum viable product now where we can really show off different uh, uh, setups of Plone uh, much easier uh, uh, in the future. And as you saw, maybe on on the on the previous uh, uh, what I said, like there's now also a Plone distribution switch on the on the Plone add-on gallery, where you can in the future when they are released, you can uh, 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 you, you can search for distributions. So, yeah, but, I'm there. The, we're yeah. there. The feature. Uh, yeah, I was well, a bit nervous. I'm a bit nervous about this, but so the feature is that uh, Erico mm -hmm. and Fred and uh, a couple of other people uh, have been working on <laughs> a new installation story or updating the installation story based on the, a Docker setup. Um, and since I wasn't in Innsbruck, um, and but I really wanted to be part of that, I I asked Fred to explain that to me, and he told me uh, that uh, his colleague Maurits, um, he explained it to Maurits, and Maurits <laughs> yeah, uh, and answered, if you explain it 10 more times, a bit more slowly, then maybe he'll get it. So we'll, we'll do an experiment, and Fred will try to explain <laughs> the new setup to me. Yeah, and so if Maurits, I understand this one is for it, you. maybe you do too. <laughs> 
Yeah, so Boris, this one is for you. This is the second time. Uh, I also kind of tested it a bit on a, on a, on a customer uh, uh, contact uh, 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 this week to quickly show him what we were going to because, yeah, we'll, we'll get to it later. This is, this is really relevant. Um, we had, um, so we've had containers for Plon for a very long time already. I mean, like for five or six years at least, uh, the first talks about uh, uh, running Plone in containers with then uh, you only had Docker uh, was like 2015 from, I think, Odo Web. Uh, uh, which showed uh, uh, and kind of started the first containers there. Um, and, and yeah, as if you hadn't noticed, uh, uh, containerization is taking over the IT world. It's the new preferred format, I think, for many applications where they get packaged in a kind of, yeah, in a, in a, on a container image, you run them on a, on, a, on a container runtime environment, and it abstracts a, a lot of the complexity that you would normally have with distributing applications where those applications need or, or make assumptions about operating systems, make assumptions about network configuration, make assumptions about the libraries that are there, that make assumptions about the programming languages that are installed and the versions. And I mean, that has been a, 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 a large part of, of my day job as well uh, to, to get that stuff fixed as you're, you're as well, Philip. And that's where containerization has some big promises to, to, uh, to simplify that. Like I said, we have had containers for the uh, last five to eight years minimally, but we were, the thing is what we were doing, we was like, we were kind of treating uh, the, com the, the container uh, as a virtual machine. And what I meant, mean with that is we, you base it, uh, a, a container image, when you start building it, it's based in a Docker file. And you basically say, so let's dive in here. So let's pick the, yeah, let's pick, let's pick the builder one. So here I'm showing, I'm screen sharing now uh, for people. I'm showing the Plone front end repository, which is uh, uh, one of the newer uh, repositories that has our container uh, uh, or I, actually image definition setup for uh, uh, the next generation of, of Plone uh, uh, images. Can you zoom images for those who are watching uh, the yes. video? It, it's all, we'll add the links to the repositories that we're going through uh, to the show notes. Obviously, this is the yeah. Plone front end Docker file in this case. Yes, and it's the, the builder file. And this is where it gets interesting. So what you can do with Docker is you say, on top, you say from node 16 slim. This is an image that has been provided by the node uh, maintainers. Uh, and it's a slim version, so they didn't install anything. And it's kind of installing a min minimal Linux kind, Unix kind of environment. And then you start installing stuff. So you say, look, from the base image, uh, APT is the package manager, install build essential, install Python 3, um, NPM install, the Volto generator, and then we start installing all kinds of stuff you see here. Yep. So this is kind of the, the setup script that you could also do with configuration management, what you could do with Ansible, or you can do by hand or uh, your homegrown scripts to provision a new server where everything is there so that in the end you can run. And this is where something, if you notice, we don't actually run something here now. We just install stuff. So this is basically the automated installation story for the front end. So you install a U-man, then you call uh, the U-man uh, Yo, as it's called. Uh, yeah. Plone Volto yeah. generator, and from the generator, or from the yeah, whatever uh, the, the yeah. templatey thing, uh, it builds the project. Yeah, but and it then doesn't you, run it, it. It doesn't run it yet here because that's the what I what is, was going to say is we've been kind of treating so far uh, the uh, uh, and, uh, we doesn't sound like a, a complaint or something, but it's not. It's like um, we 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 created the base image and then whenever, because this is the base stuff, but say you want, you have a project, Philip, and you want to add some add-ons. Yep. And part of those add-ons are part of the project, like the theme and the policy package and the other stuff, and you need to install those. But those packages might have other dependencies. You might be needing uh, a beautiful soup. You might be needing uh, other, other packages as well. So what we did was like, we had this one image called, uh, 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 um, I oh, forgot, forgot the name. And you, we, we had this image. And then on every run for your project, you would have to install all that extra stuff. It takes and, forever. And, and it takes forever, or depending on your machine, but it still can take minutes uh, to, 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 to five minutes to eight minutes sometimes if you have, depending on the project size. And then finally, the whole thing would start up. 
And that's uh, Docker solved this already many years ago because what you can do is actually you can have multi-stage builds. So we are now creating uh, Docker uh, Builder. Oh, I forgot to figure out to to open the documentation. I'll do that later. And there are, if you see in front front end, there are here five Docker files. So we have the Docker file builder. This is the base one. Then we have a Docker file production. This is the basics for. Also, it starts from Node 16 Slim but we just install the basics that we need. And we add, for example, a health check, because if you run this container in production, you want to have some extra facilities that the container uh, engine can check the container if it's still up. And then if you go back, you see, oh, look, here's the Docker file dev. And here it gets interesting because we yes. don't depend from Node Slim anymore. We depend from Plone Frontend Builder. And this is the uh, uh, the, the, the image that was defined by the previous one. So we depend on this one. This is development. So we say, okay, look, we're good to go. Everything's, everything's in there. We say the work there and we do yarn start. So this one is actually starting yarn when you use this container. But there's another uh, image here. Um, I'm on front end, Docker file dev. So for example, we also generate nightlies, which is a nightly copy of the, this is the kind of the old, the, the existing one where we put everything in there, where you can really test every commit that has made it or every merge that has made it to the main uh, branch of Volto is released every night in the nightly. And the dev one here, um, I show it, that just starts the stuff up, but the production one, and I have to look, I think this is the production one. Yes, we do it from front end builder. We install it. We remove all uh, uh, development artifacts because you don't need them. And then we restart it. So we, we clean up the builder. Then we say, look, start a new and use all the stuff. But now from the front end prod config, which has the health check and the other stuff for production stuff. And we just copy in the application that was generated. And this is how you kind of have a, have a dependency hierarchy of the, of the images where you, in the, and the end result is that you create specialized images for the tasks that you need. So if you want to do a development, uh, 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 if you want to develop, you need different stuff in your image than if you uh, uh, are going to run uh, the, the plant site in production, because then you want the minimal stuff, the smallest image possible, so it deploys quickly, and you want to add some other stuff like health checks and other stuff. And so where are the add-ons uh, installed? Because I see Yarn mm -hmm. build and I saw Yarn install in the in the base image, but I didn't see a Yarn uh, in in between where I no. uh, like so here, plug so in my own stuff. No, so that's not what you find here, Philip, because this is the, these are the, uh, the 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 base images on which uh, 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 projects on which people can start using the base images for their own projects. So here, nothing else specialized is installed. Well, maybe if I look closely, there's for the dev, there should be, uh, uh, no, 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 it's, it's even in the base because we know we need it. Uh, so there is some stuff here. Pum, 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 pum. Um, yeah, so it's copying the yarn install. So that's happening here. The base stuff is, is done here. And if there are add-ons registered at the end, then it will do here, it will do the setup add-on. But that's something, so these are the base images, like the, 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 the clean Plone core or Volto core setup. And after that, you're going to do the same for your own projects. You're going to depend from one of our images that are now published. So I'm going now to the showing hub docker.com, Plone, Plone frontend. And here you see that all these images are available publicly and are released. And as you can see, we've just had a, a Plone, uh, Volto is now to 17 alpha. So we have the first alpha release here. And here you see all the images from the, you can scroll back. So, so this is, I have to quit my doubts that I, I am uh, a bit consistent with the story. So this is what we've been working on. It started in Innsbruck and Eric and I uh, uh, and others have uh, uh, given feedback and we've been working on it now for, uh, 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 for a few weeks now and we have stable set up now. Um, so this is the, the kind of the new way to, uh, or, or an improved way to, to build our images and to have multi-stage builds there and also to show it and to, uh, to publish them later, update documentation so that other uh, 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 people in the Plone community can start using these images for their own project setup. But indeed, as you said, Philip, like, how am I going to use that? Because that's also, um, 
uh, um, the the thing is we we. We did this in the past, but we uh, we are eating our own dog food here, as the as the saying goes. So the, I'm also a, a member of the Plone IA team, uh, AI, AI team, the sysadmin and infrastructure team, and we have other teams that are dependent on uh, on, on websites that we have for the foundation, the main Plone org websites, but also the upcoming uh, new conference website, as you kind of <laughs> sneakily mentioned at the beginning of the uh, TPN. Uh, and I've been involved in that as well, uh, at least to provide from the AI team, provide this setup uh, to the uh, conference organizers so that some developers of code syntax can start building uh, the Plone Conf website uh, uh, for the 2023 edition. So what I'm going to show now is what you were asking. This is the repo we kind of forked, copied from the previous setup, 2023.ploneconf.org. It's at least it's open read only now for, the, for everybody uh, uh, to, to check what we're doing here. And this is a kind of, we are kind of beta testing here, a new template for how to set up a, a Plone 6 project with Volto as the default front end. Mm -hmm. There are two directories here. So it's kind of a mini uh, 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 monorepo with the backend and the front end directory. And in the backend directory, here you'll find a minimal Plone 6 uh, setup for the backend, for the, the Plone server. They're all make files that uh, are used that uh, create, uh, uh, have nice shortcuts that uh, uh, build the stuff that's needed. There's, for example, linting stuff here, as you can see, uh, formatting checks, lint checks, and there's a build image here that actually builds the backend as a Docker image. So that's backend. The interesting part here, if you look in the backend, there's not, I mean, it's all uh, 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 pip based and MX dev based. Uh, for development. And there's only one package here, which is PlonConf Core. And that is kind of the policy package that we, uh, uh, I think, are have been using for many years now uh, in larger projects where you say, look, I have a policy package or in smaller projects, you only have a theme package, a theme add-on that has the theme and some policy set up. And this is where the customizations are going. So for example, here's the PlonConf Core. Uh, uh, and here we can, for example, define some custom content types, like uh, uh, there will be a, a training content type as usual. There's a talk content type, I assume there. There's a speaker content type there. And we need to store that stuff, even if we have, I mean, the front end will is now separated from the back end, but we still need the definitions for those content types. So those are in here. And this is also part of the effort. Uh, uh, this is not only about uh, 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 creating containers, but it's also about simplifying our project setup here, where there's just a requirements file. I mean, there's no build out here anymore. Uh, and there's one simple configure here that says, include PlonConf core. So it's kind of what I'm going to repeat uh, uh, in a few minutes. It's profiles all the way down. It's just the profile the ZCML profile of the PlonConf core package that's included here. And for the rest, there's not much meat here anymore. There, okay, so it doesn't even have, but PlonConf core itself has a setup PY or does it not? It should have, yes, it's a yeah, it Python has. package. To, yes. For so the dependencies, a, obviously. For the dependencies, and you see it needs some it's form support. We want. So th this is actually, this is the kind of the, the interesting. Ex uh, the, the package is interesting, by the way, uh, for everyone who ever did the mastering plone training or attended that. This is a real life uh, application of a solution for <laughs> some of the same problems that are solved in the mastering plone training, which does a conference website. And this is the one that has been used in the last couple of plone, conf, uh, plone conferences. Uh, doesn't do everything like mastering plone, obviously, but it has really nice uh, ideas and custom serializers and stuff like that uh so check that out if you're uh if you want to see how, yeah. how we're doing stuff in the real world something interesting here also is if you see pytest which we yes. kind of talked about so there's already pytest in here so this is like profiles all the way down and this is like the old list in in build up where you say look my project has these and these eggs or these and these add-ons they are now like in the profile of the first add-on that you add to the project, to the project, pro project add-on profile. And those are in, oh, oh collective export import is in there as well. So that's the, and, and then you wonder, of course, Philip, where's all the other stuff that Buildout used to do? Docker? Yeah, ask me. <laughs> Where is <laughs> it? Where is it? Yeah, indeed. So that's Docker. So if you look here, Docker files, here's our Docker file. And there you see, we depend from Clone Server Builder. We copy our requirements and our scripts. 
we add our configure set CML. That was the one that is, says, look, I want to import for a plone conf. Uh, if you start a plone and you do all the ZCML fancy uh, component architecture setup, uh, uh, please include plone conf pro. We run pip install. We copy all the stuff to, and that's here it comes again. Here we build the stuff on the builder image. Now the second phase, we use the server product config setup image, and then we copy our generated application from this part. We copy it into the second stage, and this is the lean and mean production optimized one. And we're good to go. So this is where the whole system actually you're installing, you're installing your Linux oper Unix type operating system here. You're uh, uh, getting all the plone, uh, uh, sorry, all the Python goodies from the from the builder image. You build all the stuff with pip install. So your packages you're, come in. If you if you use that, um, let me ask that. If you use that, you're actually not installing plone in itself itself because it's already installed in the image. Yes, and. If you want to switch plone versions, that's really, really tough because you have to change this variable. Cool. M makes it much, much faster. So you don't have to do anything because it's already in the Docker hub. Yeah, although the, the whole basic template of, of, of the system on which you're going, the, the container on which you're going to run your plone application is already there provided uh, to you by plone front end. And we didn't talk about it, but there's, of course, also plone back end. So let's go to, and that's what why I'm, I'm kind of switched it now because I first now switched to uh, the back end, and this is using the plone backend images. So now we're going to look at the other folder, which is the whole folder front end. Uh, let, 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 let's oh, go. Yeah, let's let's stay in the back end for a second. What about development? You're the back end guy, right? <laughs> no, 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 not only. <laughs> no, no, uh, no, 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 no. What about development? <clears throat> how, how how does the development <clears throat> Sorry. Uh, work? Because like you you run that, it runs in a Docker, it builds, it uses a Docker image. Uh, builds this on, on, on top of that, um, and then... Yeah, I'm going to show guys when, that later. You change some code. What do, what do you have to do? Yeah, I'm going to show that, that later, because okay, first I, want, I have to finish this story, but in need Docker files, here you have your Docker file dev, yes. you see, and this is the specialized one. We, Secret we sauce. Get from, we get from server dev, we copy uh, the requirements and other stuff in there, we copy some additional stuff, and we start running it. So this, and if you need if you need any more developer tools or other stuff in there, you can just copy them and install them here and be done with it. There's another one here as well, which I'm going to acceptance. And here we say, look, can you do a bit more because we need some extra packages here. We need REST API and it is using also here, Lucy, Plone server acceptance. And this is kind of a, the server setup that also has a robot framework and other packages. And uh, what do you need? Uh, you need Selenium, you need a Chrome driver to uh, uh, to be able to, to steer the, the, the headless browser that's in there. So that's all in this package already done. And you only copy your specific application stuff again and you install it. And then you have a specialized acceptance image that you can then use in CI CD later to very quickly start up an acceptance server and test your product without every time you need an acceptance backend server to test your stuff, it gets the plain blown image and it has to install robot framework again, Selenium, yada, 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 yada. And then you're five or 10 minutes later for every single run of an acceptance test. So this is again the the, the plone front end and the plone back end show the basics of how we create the base images for your projects and then in your project yourself again you can specialize and use a different Docker file for production as you have a Docker file for development. Okay, n now you can move to the front end since you're Finally. showing that afterwards anyway. <laughs> and you need to so zoom in a bit more in your browser. Uh, okay, this one. Yeah. Now it's getting really big. Okay. So yes. front end is, is the same story here. As you can see, what I, what I said, uh, another effort uh, started uh, this year and also what we worked on in Innsbruck is like cleaning up this part, profiles all the way down. This is if you now scaffold, uh, 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 if you, you now scaffold a new photo project, uh, let me show you. And you go to the, oh, that's small. So, Install, showing the plone, six documentation. We're going to switch that uh, live because it's now still on six.docs.plone.org and it's going to be moving to docs.plone.org uh, soon. Installation story. Um, mm, 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 mm. Use containers, install plone from its packages, prerequisites, and then there's here the meat. We've got uh, 
we already have a, a, a scaffolding for developers. You install cookie cutter and then you can use the cookie cutter who's got, what's going to set up a, a, a kind of a project for you. That's what here it is. So you start the cookie cutter and you say cookie cutter plan starter and it sets up everything for you. What I'm now going to show you here, this is the kind of much leaner setup because there's not, there's not really a photo project here anymore. Let's go to Erico and I think also uh, Victor and other people who we talk to. So this is also here profiles all the way down. There's not a package JSON here anymore. So how, how does it know? There's no package. No, the package JSON, just like the, uh, the back end, if you go to add ons, there's one add on here. This is the PlogConf website. So there's the theming add on. And in here, you have like the basics of a, of a, pl of a plone Volto front end add on with all the setup and things you can do here. Here is the package JSON. And Oops. here's again, let's. That used to be 177 lines long. Yes, but we're building on the package JSON from the Volto. Excellent. Package, and that one is coming in. And then we only say for the add-ons, look, we want to add these stuff, these things extra. To Much it. better. And the whole config has moved to the source where there's one index.js now. And as you know, Volto frontend is, is with React, it's much more also functional. So the whole setup of, of the front end is where you have a config object and the config object is passed through all and all add-ons can add their config to the to the config object and then when all add-ons are done you you start the uh, the front end system so here you see okay we import config and we apply config and this is the setup for the plone conf uh, website front end so we say for example oh i have to fix that to uh, the new one um, so we say, for example, use Matomo stuff here. We set up some social network links. We add uh, special views for, like I said, the front end part of the person, the talk, the training, and the keynote content types, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So this is, this is all in the photo training, uh, uh, docu photo training material and uh, documentation as well. So done, hero, blocks, blocks, blocks. And you finally say export, done. But it's profiles all the way down, Philip. So the, the, the kind of the... Yeah, the, 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 there's not really a photo project. There's not a distinction anymore between a photo project and a photo add-on. The, 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 the project, the, 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 the start, the root project is configured just like an add-on and we insert uh, the photo package. That's excellent. I'm very much looking forward to using that. Uh, waiting, waiting for Erica. We, we're working on a project together and I'm working, waiting for him to apply the new uh, setup to the project that already exists that uses the old setup. And uh, the thing I'm most looking forward to is the diff between these two. That is, that's mm. going to be fun to read. Yeah. De so deleted now... lines in a diff are the best thing, <laughs> just to make sure. So now the demo effect, I hope everything still works. I kind of tested it. So here we have uh, my local copy of the... Uh, Be a bit road. bigger, please. Yes, I'm, go yes, 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 I'm for, going for, to... For the audience. Dun, 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 dun. This or this? What do you prefer? Well, wait, a bit bigger. This bit bigger. Good. This one. Yeah, okay, this, this, look, I can see fine, but I have a huge yeah. screen. If, you, if you're on a laptop, that's going to be challenging. Yeah. Otherwise... So this is my, my local checkout uh, from... Um, uh, from the 2023 PlonConf.org repository on the Plone Foundation uh, uh, org on GitHub. And here we have and now the meat of, of how are we going to combine this all together? Because I showed you about the whole, the images and that we can now have, have multiple images and specialized images for the use case. Uh, I've talked about profiles all the way down. So both the back end and the front end scaffolding are much leaner and cleaner now. And you don't have all this boilerplate around uh, and the distinction between a project and an add-on. And now you have to combine it locally. So I'm just going to show you, make start. And here we go. I'll make it a bit bigger. You see, it's all doing the, if you recognize that this is yarn start a bit here above, you see already that the backend container has already started, which is a bit like, no, it, yeah, it's got joking that the plone backend is now much faster than the plone frontend. This takes uh, I know, 20 yeah. to 40 seconds, but the plone backend is already there and no waiting for the front end to finally be compiled because JavaScript is so fast these days. <laughs> no joking. It's doing a lot of things. The, the, the photo front end is re it's, it's really grown a lot. So, oh, w we're done. We're done already. I'm talking too much. So let's go here. Let's go to my pom, pom, pom. Where are you? 
Here, no, that's uh, ah, here we are. Reload, and here we are. So this is Red. my local host, Red. Yeah, I'm going to explain you in a minute why I did that. So this is a copy. I, I, I kind of understand. Yeah? The, I, I can already guess. It's yeah. a warning. It's a warning. This is this is not now. So this is this is the blown front end. It's connecting to the uh, blown back end, and I can just log in here now. And it's basically just admin, admin. And then I'm here, and I can start editing pages with all the photo goodness that's there in Plone Six. Okay, and I did some modifications here. So this is locally. Now we're going to develop Philip. So that color must be red. So I I must have added something here uh, in the customizations uh, to. Uh, red. Um, I, I had it yellow. Yellow is much less. Yeah, but that's not true. That's red. So I did some modifications here. Let's see if I can pick them up. Ah, side overrides. Here it is in my helpful. So I, I did some changes here probably, and it's ah background color red. So let's change it back to yellow because yellow is much less found here. So let's do it here. Then you show maybe here it's you see five seconds it, it just did something here i'm going to show you again uh red yellow and blue is the expression right save you see there it goes but about 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 build 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 and oh sorry it's already there i didn't even ha i pressed the refresh but it doesn't even have to you see blue so you've got hot reloading so i can now just work and actually as a, so as a developer i can front end source add-ons this is my place where i work I can do stuff. I have hot reloading. I can change other things in the site overrides, which are kind of overrides the theme, which uses the semantic UI uh, 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 override system. And I can start developing. And the only, the only thing I did here, Philip, was make start. So now, how does this work? So this the, is doc you have yeah, questions first. Yeah, two, bring two, it on. Two Docker. Uh, containers running, one for the back end, one for the front end. Yes. Oh, to show you that, so I've got, uh, for this to work, I have to install a Docker engine here. So I've got a Docker uh, a desktop set up on my Mac. Here you are. And here you see the same output from this container building. You see it here again. So I have here in my containers, you see there's now running 2023 PloneConf, which is a stack or a Docker Compose stack of two images, the back end dev and the front end dev. So this is in the background, uh, Docker desktop doing this stuff. And where is this, all this goodness now defined? That's in the main directory. We've moved it around. We had it in, in DevOps, but it's now moved around. It's here, the Docker Compose. And here you see our development setup where we say, okay, the front end dev is context front end. That's the front end folder. And it uses the Docker file dev also from the front end directory. That's your uh, uh, Docker files, this one. Yeah, which again sets up your whole environment system. But now to start it locally, to really have a real de uh, developer environment, we have the Docker Compose here that says front end dev. We expose some ports. Here we mount, this is very important, we yeah, mount that's, the that's, add-ons. That's, that's the secret sauce. Yes, because this allows me to locally here in my editor start mucking around with uh, uh, site variables so because if, if, it is mounted. For, for the people who are listening, who, who uh, so uh, VS Code has a feature called uh, remote containers or remote development. I can't remember how it's called. I actually have it enabled here. And you can say, okay, create a dev container or uh, edit, edit this project in a container. You actually don't do that. You, no, you we know, don't do your, that. Your yeah, code correct. runs, uh, you, you edit your code locally. Um, yeah, and, and this has some, this mounted, has some, yeah. It already, it, it does the hot reload, the front end does the hot reloading automatically. Yeah, so we changed something on the on uh, on the host file system in the in the add-on, uh, and the container sees, picks up on the change and rebuilds on the fly with hot reloading. That's the whole uh, Resol uh, React uh, goodness yes. that's in in the front end. You have hot reloading, and the color changes from uh, from yellow to black to whatever I do here. Let's uh, just for giggles, yellow. There we go. So. This is the Docker Compose. This is the front end part. Um, this is, by the way, also a bit of discussion that we have here because we are mounting it. We, the, the, the container doesn't have all information and there are some issues, I think, now with linting and uh, code completion uh, uh, that you need in here. So the ports here, something, and here's the back end. So this is, again, 
it's it, I have to say turtles all the way down to, to have another Terry Pratchett disc world quote, but profiles all the way down, but also containers all the way down. So here we do exactly the same thing, but then for the back end, we depend, we, we build the Docker file, Docker file dev for the back end. We can, with one line, we can switch the whole project to the next clone version if we want to. Remember, when I change this one, it gets passed into the Docker file and the Docker file starts building your backend local development environment based on another, uh, the next version of Plone. So there are Plone 6. Whenever Plone 603 is released, there will be a, 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 a Plone server dev 603 image. And that's what's going to use this switch. We set some environment stuff. Uh, I don't have time for this one. I'll do that the next time. And oh, with my nice local password. <laughs> Please use it. That's not going to work. That's only the Postgres on my uh, local machine here, uh, people. We mount the PloneConf core in there. We mount the data in there. What if is you data? Want to. So data is the data directory of the Plone. Remember, this is Plone backend. So we have a file storage or blob storage, or we have a connection to the Postgres database if we use rel storage as the yes. storage backend. So and this is your... for file storage. You use uh, you store that in a data directory and mount it like that, because the yeah um, yeah. yeah actually that's the, and that's this is where where the whole migration or the whole switch to uh, to container based development uh, uh, is 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 not something to take uh, lightly because you yeah you really need to understand a little bit of these Docker things. For example, this is not really a bind mount. So here we bind mount our local directory into the container. And here we say to Docker, Docker, please just create me a volume image, name it data and mount it here and don't bother me. <laughs> so that's if you go to Docker desktop and you see here the images, you see I have, uh, where are you? Um, containers, images, oh, sorry, volumes. You see here's my PlonCons data. And if I inspect it here, there's, you see, there's the blob storage and the file storage. So this is like a kind of, of, of shielded off data volume that is managed by Docker. And I just say to Docker here, bring it on, give me the data volume uh, over here. And I don't care, but every time I restart my container or rebuild my container with a new clone version, if I change the clone version here, it's going to rebuild the whole image, but it's still using the volume that's on Docker desktop. So I get some kind of persistence here. And this is something that trips off people because then they reset their whole Docker desktop. They start doing and all the data is gone because they were depending on a volume image uh, uh, from a Docker de desktop that was managed here. So that's a bit of the things you need to, so you need to learn a bit more about Docker uh, and we're probably going to, that's the whole, trick, uh, the, the whole question also in the, in the, for the documentation now, how much are we going to explain? Uh, uh, I mean, we're not teaching Python programming uh, in the Plone docs. Are we? Yeah, obviously. Yeah, it's true. Um, so, in, in, so go, back. moving to the back end, uh, yeah. development of the back end, same. You, you change your Python code. Do you, um, did you plug in Plone Reload so it automatically I, pick, picks up the, uh, the changes? I think we have, but if we, uh, I'm not sure yet because the problem, you know, with Plone Reload is that Python is a bit trickier to uh, to hot reload, uh, um, especially if you start uh, changing ZCML and other code, or if you start overriding and changing classes, then the Python interpreter is not that happy. Yeah, and you need to do a full restart. So I'm not sure about the story there. You could install Plone Reload if you change templates, etc. then that would still work, but that kind of defeats the purpose now because the templates are no longer in the backend. So we, you have the hot reloading now in the front end, and that's where you are living your 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 day-to-day -day development uh, uh, activities for most of the time, because the backend is now about the data and maybe about some business rules and about sec uh, security on the backend. Yeah, well, all the templates. I'm, I'm doing four migrations simultaneously at the moment, two to Volto and two to Classic, and most of the work obviously is done in the backend. Mm -hmm. So how, how fast is, um, is, is can I s tell this whole setup, please only restart the backend? Uh, so and, uh, because starting the front end still takes for my point of view, a, a lot of time uh, for the yarn start to to do its job. Yeah, that's true. And the back end. So that's what that's, this is also one of these nitty uh, gritty details we're working on now, because now you have like make start and it just starts off both. Uh, and you can't mention we are looking still for a thing to how to make to say only make start uh, because you can do that now make start back end. I can show you. 
Now it's actually going into the backend folder and in the make file there, it's calling the make start back. And you see, it's already here using default configuration, but it kind of, there's a, I think a problem now where if you do that individually in the second terminal, also for the front end, they can't find each other on the backend network. So they can't talk with each other because you started them individually. And as you can see here in the, um, in our main Docker compose file, we should connect. We're not doing that. Hmm, interesting. So th that's the issue. I'll be working on this the week. Like, hey, if I start them individually, because then you could indeed could say, oh, just kick the back end, restart it, uh, uh, and then and keep the front end running. But that's the kind of Docker Compose thingy we still have to uh, we have to work on. Yeah, I have more questions. Uh, how, yeah, how, 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 how about a, a PDB when I uh, add a PDB to, to my code? What yeah, so then happens? You, yeah, then at the moment you're, you, you get a PDB here and nothing has happened. But what you can do, and we're already working on this, is the same story, is that you can say, uh, make a debug backend. And now I started the backend container, but nothing has started yet. But I did connect interactively the terminal to my terminal here. So now I'm actually, I'm in the backend container. And I can, yeah. And what I can do now is like, like a Docker entry point, uh, debug. Oh no, it's called console. I think it's not in there. And now in the container that has already been started, it's starting a clone with console. And here's the, oh, here's my debugger. Uh, is up here. Yes, there it is. Up clone, uh, bone. Clone. No, it's so I up. Can, I can also Here it is, my clone site. I can also start the instance in the foreground and run into a PDB when when it hits yep, during yep, the application. Yep. Yeah, so that's that's. A, and I mean, then that's... the back end can find the front end when I do it like that, or is that still work in progress? That's a bit of work process. I still have to check this week. Uh, there's something going on there that the, the, the front end couldn't get a back end on port 8080. Well, that's... See, look, because you have to, do, you remember, Philip, when you left a PDB in the project and it goes to production and then the site uh, gets locked up? Um, yeah, you should not do that, obviously. That's why we have uh, commit hooks and stuff like that. Um, exactly. But that would, be the, that would be the same as if I had a PDB in there. I'm now exiting the container. I would just say uh, uh, make start backend and it would hit a PDB. Then because my terminal, because the output and I can't interactively, then, yeah, then yeah, the PDB have, just hangs have, there forever. Yeah, have yeah. No standard in. Yeah, so that's the, uh, the integrity we have to, to solve here. Um, but for now, as you see, make start, it just, it's, it started and how does the magic, I'm not going to do that in too much detail, but this is a lot of make file uh, goodness that's in here, uh, where here the make file has all the commands. You could also, so for example, make a, a status. And here you see nothing is running at the moment, but yeah, of course, because the make start was not done there. There's one interesting part here. If you, if you are knowing a bit more about Docker Compose, all the commands in the make files kind of use a dev CMD here, and that's this long line here where you can also do your own manual stuff. So what you can do here is, okay, if I want to, if I don't want to use make, but I want to start uh, uh, something myself, I can just paste this. It says where the project there is. It has all the, you see the folder version and the clone versions in here. Yep. And now I can just say uh, up, for example, profile dev. This is, I think what the make start is normally doing. <laughs> Minus profile, just don't mention the profile. Oh, then it says no servers. Uh-oh. My, this is why I shouldn't do. I'm just going to look it up because it's in here. Start, where are you? And now I'm in the wrong Docker Compose, of course. I mean, to have to be in here. Hello. Here. the main make file, it has format yeah. front and here it is. So this is what I, I should have called dev up. Dev up. So this is calling dev command profile dev up. But if you Not want to up do your profile dev, but profile dev up. Okay. Yeah. So it should have worked like, and there it goes. You see, so yep. there is you, how you can also do your own custom. Uh, custom commands here, uh, uh, and, and and but you need to have this extra special uh, because Compose is a small layer on top of uh, uh, a normal Docker uh, where you start up single containers, and Docker Compose kind of keeps the stuff together. 
Okay, uh, I'm going to for next time. I'm going to go into more details about the make files and other stuff. I'm um, very much looking forward to the to to a more complete development story, including back end and front. I, I understand that for the front end that works fine, but for the back end, um, I from what I heard now. I will still uh, run my backend uh, locally, uh, so it can work. Because I, I'm a fan of PDB-driven development, so I'm I'm spend yeah, need, like yes, twenty yes, percent need... of my day in the mm -hmm. PDB. Yeah. So this is the local. So what I quickly want to give a kind of preview of what I'm going to talk about then in the next talk, the next TPN is the whole deployment because we've now only done like like continuous integration. Uh, 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 not really show that uh, either, I think. But here's, for example, testing cloneconf.org. That's a super secret password here now because it's not really there. And here you see the same. Well, it's, it has, the, of course, the, the old uh, 2022 setup still, which is auto-generated because we, we copied the, the setup from there and the theme. But this, we see we already have testing cloneconf now, and we also already have... 2023.plonconf.org, which also contains nothing. Uh, well, it contains the same as my local development instance. And th all this stuff is now driven from the same repository here, 2023.plonconf.org, where we're using GitHub Actions to deploy everything. So there's here GitHub, Workflows, and you see there are uh, three important... Uh, the, the, so we have back-end testing and front-end testing which deploy each of the single, the backend and the front end, uh, 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 do the code testing. And if everything is okay, they every merge to the main branch here is automatically deployed to the testing environment, testing.plone.conf.org. I can show you here. So this is the GitHub Actions file. I'll, we'll do that. We'll do this the next time. So every time something is changed, you see here, there's first uh, some... Uh, And here you have the whole workflow, Philip. So we first get some stuff, we do some testing, we release and we deploy. And this one was, I think, shortcutted. And the same goes for the front end testing. Sorry. Where we also, and you see this one is released from a tag and this one was a merge to main. So this one is going to, uh, uh, this is all going to testing. And then when we make a release, of what we, oh, sorry, we, 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 so we develop, we commit stuff, uh, we get feedback from GitHub uh, on the linting and the testing if we make an error. Once stuff is merged to, uh, uh, to main in the repository, the testing environment is automatically updated. And when we say, look, we're good enough now for updating the live environment, then there's a separate action called the deploy to live. And this one has a trigger, if anybody knows some uh, uh, GitHub actions on top here, Whatever a tag is created, it's again running the deployment and updating the live website. Nice. And that's the whole back to front developing, locally developing in containers, but using the same containers because this is all this is using the what I showed before. This is using the Docker, the, the production Docker file of our definition that are defined here to deploy the, the, the real site. I but think we're, we're going to we're going to talk about this part in more because we're now at one one hour fifteen minutes uh, and we should really really uh, go on with the next. So there's a, as you see, there's so much to talk here. And uh, I see like, I see a training coming up again. Uh, <laughs> we had a deployment uh, set up uh, training last last year uh, where Erico showed the um, um, yeah. against together. They showed the current state that they had last year, but the current state has changed, obviously. So that needs to be uh, upgraded, uh, yeah, and so, uh, we'll we'll keep having we'll continue having an eye on that and updating you in the uh, in the podcast about these things. Uh, I think it's vital because it lowers the uh, the entry uh, level uh, into into developing clone if you have a development setup and a testing setup that is basically one command uh, using Docker. And you can not only, it's not only for demoing, but it's actually something you can use for uh, developing, demoing, testing, deploying, and production. And that yeah, is- and to, 
Wow. Yeah, and to 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 wrap this up, Philip. So I'm showing this now because I have this uh, this multiple hat issue where I'm on the AI team, uh, uh, and we started this podcast uh, 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 one and a half years ago. But this is really work by, especially I have to thank Erico for for all the great work he did here, also with the whole CI CD uh, that we have now for deploying our sites to uh, to a small Docker swarm cluster that the AI team is now managing, where Plone.org is running on, and also the PlonConf sites are going to run on other sites. Um, it's the whole profile story together with uh, Victor and others to clean up that story. And as you say, this it's not only for deployment to live. What this also enables is, for example, all these nice uh, uh, browser uh, web-based developer environments that have been popping up. Uh, I should mention, for example, a GitHub uh, code space, I think, is one. Uh, code Sandbox is another one where you can just log into a remote site and you have your whole development environment in front of you and you can even just run it in the browser or run it there. And that's also, you can only do that when your backend service is containerized and we have that now. Excellent. I'm, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm super excited and I'm, I, I, I would love to have seen, I, I, I would like to have seen that two years ago or one year ago, but it, yeah, it's, yeah. It, it is really complicated doing that and getting it right and the, the state that we have now is is fine and it's teachable but it, when you when you when we dumb it down or slim it down with profiles all the way down and the setup boilerplate is just much much slower uh, smaller and the startup is and the installation is much much faster um, it is it's just great for plone to have that yeah. So uh, it's it just like you say. Yeah. Of course, so there's, this is all in development now. So if, yeah. uh, I think Erico has already documented some of the build images, but we really have to stabilize this first. We are eating our own dog food with uh, the code syntax people to uh, start uh, using this setup for PloneConf. I'm going to apply it later to the PloneOrg setup because we also have to need to continue to develop and improve the Plone.org setup. Uh, then documentation has to be written. We need to create a new cookie cutter that does this stuff. So we're not there yet. If people are interested and know about this. Stuff, Stuff and know about dev containers, uh, uh, please contact us uh, uh, to help out because we, we are kind of figuring this out on our own. We have some experience, uh, but we really could use some uh, uh, some more eyes on, on what we are doing here and to get feedback on how this is working. Yeah. That's so that's a plea for help. <laughs> yeah, chip in if you if you have yeah. know how about that, especially deep. I, I, I learned some stuff about uh, debugging a uh, Python applications that run in a Docker container, and uh, the dev containers are really cool for that. Uh, and yeah, that is one way. I'm, I'm not 100% comfortable with doing that in my projects yet, but I'll. I'll probably get there. If you see um, it so like I did now, I, th I think then it, it, it hopefully it, and, it does seem a bit, it, bit, a bit easier than it yeah. was. Because if you had shown it the same to me like half a year ago, I would also be like, really? Yeah. But yeah now it, that I've been working with it, it's, it starts to get. Uh, Philip, let's skip the whole, because that's also something I could have talked for another hour about CICD. Obviously. We'll use the same for the tra uh, for the uh, demo sites uh, as well, obviously. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The demo sites are also using, yeah, yeah, yeah. are already using a previous version also yeah, of the, this stuff. the older version of that, yeah. yes. We have yes. one small goodie, uh, um, one more thing, uh, one add-on, just a tiny thing that uh, popped up uh, because we both uh, used it in uh, projects yeah, where we had to migrate old packages. You got an alert because I liked some one of your <coughs> comments. Yes, you liked a comment from me from 2017. I was like, but, but wait, Philip, our export-import uh, 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 guy is, is referring to a very old package I kind of, which was an orphan package from a, a company called Pareto, uh, uh, who went out of business somewhere around 2014, I think, who did a lot of plone. Some very good Dutch uh, plone developers were working there at the time. Uh, and I kind of used that package to, uh, at the time to move a Plone 3 site to Plone 4 Dexterity. And then there was the requirement that all the, uh, we, we used to have relative links in Plone 3. And in Plone 4, I don't think they were mandatory, but it was really advisable to enable them. We had moved all the links to resolve UID, which meant that every link to another image or an internal link was not like a, a, a dot dot slash uh, other folder other folder uh, uh, page name, but it was dot slash resolve UID and then the UID of the content item. 
And the big exactly. advantage and if, there, if, there was... If the content item was moved or renamed, the link would still work, even though even even w without redirects and stuff yeah. like that. So that's But really the problem nice. was, of course, the previous clones if you was still relative links and you wanted to move to resolve UID. So this is what this package does. It has a really nice uh, recursive call chain uh, doing in, in six or seven functions where it goes through all your content, finds images and links, and tries to fix them. Yeah, I have had the same problem with the uh, old Plone project where uh, a lot of links were relative. Uh, it was started in Plone 3 and now it's Plone 4, so like 4,000 relative links and a couple of non-relative with uh, Resolve UID. And I wanted to change them to Resolve UID before I do a migration from four to six using export import. So wh why that? Because, uh, um, be because the, the export import story has something that fixes all of these links. So after yeah. you import all the, your code, uh, it goes through the HTML and let, checks for links and fixes the links, updates like the data tags that it needs for TinyMC to work nicely. And it changes the uh, relative links to resolve UID links as well. Um, yeah. But Which I, is I could not use that because during the migration, I was moving stuff around like crazy, like almost everything moved from this folder to that folder. Uh, and so the relative links will all break. So after my, my step, the uh, fix here, HTML step would, would not work. I, it needs to be fixed, uh, before and this links need to be UUID'd before that. And that's where Pareto UID fixer came in nicely. And it not only did that, it fixed all these links. It also told me, uh, which links were still broken after fixing, because obviously all sites have broken links and this one had thousands of broken links and that I, that I now can show to the client and say, Hey, your site is broken in X places. It's actually only six, 600 broken links left. And <laughs> half of these are not going to be migrated and another half is changed anyway. <laughs> so, um, that's, but. Yeah, we both had the same problem in a different, in different, different years. And it still works fine in Plone 4. It doesn't work with uh, dexterities, only archetypes, obviously, uh, which is the very interesting part there. Um, yeah, so it was really funny because when we, when we, uh, uh, when you started it, and I also, and others, uh, others, uh, and me helped with, uh, getting this stuff in export import, I kind of suggested, like, look, here's Pareto UID fixer. Uh, 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 you could edit, and then you found out that all the 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 the, the hard uh, work of the difficult part of, of finding I have a relative link here. Which item is it exactly? It has already been in core plone for many years because it's in link integrity. Link integrity yeah. is also doing the same stuff. So you kind of uh, uh, piggybacked on the whole link integrity functionality, and we kind of ditched the, my my branch where I, I added that Pareto one. Um, because if people follow the, the gen, gen, generic advice in export import is don't touch your source site, export everything and do all the work when you import it again so that you don't muck around with your source site uh, uh, that much. And as you as just explained, Philip, there is, of course, the exception to the rule. If during the migration, you move all the content around and there are still relative links, there is no relative link to be found anymore. So you need to do it on the source site because then yeah. you still have the old content configuration. Exactly. That's what I'm doing. But I, I, I ran into another problem today. Uh, just give me 30 seconds for that one. Um, like <laughs> there is like, there are content that in the future iteration, which is a Volto site in Plone 6, will not be Plone content, but imported from a another database. And then it's going to be Plone content. So the UIDs for this these items will no longer exist because we're not migrating these. The, the, so uh, we have uh... another thousands of broken links, a different project this time, similar solution. Uh, and now I need to export a, uh, a mapping of content type ID because they're like very structured content, like staff member project, stuff like mm -hmm, that. Mm -hmm. um, content type uh, ID, which is like, there's only one uh, Fred van Dijk in this organization. They're, they, they're not supposed to have two. Distinct these. value. Exact, exactly. And the old UUID. So after we import the, uh, the content from the other database, uh, <laughs> after the migration, we need, we reapply the old UUID 
that used to be the UID in the Plone uh, 3 and 4 sites to the imported data from the external database. And then the resolve UIDs, voila, they still work because I fixed them in the old site. It's so like really crazy magic. Yeah, uh, UIDs are, are really underestimated also in how we explain because I've also something you should never do is export content and then import it again in a different folder in the same site and think yeah. you're safe. Because what you're doing there is you're exporting content with UIDs, you're importing them again in a different folder and you suddenly have two content items with the same UID. Uh, for this, Philip, um, Not a good for source sites, like we said, uh, you, Pareto UID fixer is the one when you have this requirement that you're moving stuff around. The other one is co uh, collective catalog cleanup. Please run collective catalog cleanup before you start exporting stuff because it also does some sanity checks on duplicate UIDs, uh, uh, on 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 uh, ghost brains still in the catalog where the content is already gone, and that also will save you a lot of headaches uh, 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 when you go further in the migration and <laughs> you're looking like I forgot that a few times. <laughs> yeah, I, I did. I did. It, okay. not, not a big, not a big problem. Um, no, but there's, okay, there's two, there are tools for that. Yeah, um, I think we lost uh, all of our audience um, uh, for, for, with this issue uh, at these topics. Now, uh, let's wrap it up. Thanks yeah. for listening. Uh, thanks for uh, spending the time uh, with us. And uh, thanks uh, for everyone who um, wrote stuff that we use and showcase. Um, yeah, I mean, we're only, we're the story. we didn't write it. We're just using no, no. and changing no, no. small things in it. So credits, if he's still listening, it, uh, Guido Westdorp was working at the time for Pareto. He also worked for us uh, for Zest a few times, and he built that whole, uh, and, and I, I, he forced me to to learn a bit of functional programming and understanding the five recursive functions, yeah, yeah, functions that, was, that he did there. I, I would have written <laughs> that another way, but it <laughs> works really fine. Yeah. So, um yeah. Have a great, uh, what is it, March? Uh, we'll oh, yeah, March, see each other uh, Hello, uh, again in, in April. Yeah, there we are. And uh, stay healthy. And uh, let's look forward to spring. And we'll see each other at the sprint uh, in yes. Bonn. And keep on developing. There's a lot, as you see, there's a lot of interesting stuff uh, coming up, and we'll continue uh, presenting that. I think in 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 the next TP. Oh, definitely. And we're going we're going to talk about some 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 old Plone Day stuff. And yeah, stuff Philip. keeps happening. Yeah. I, thanks I for being my rubber things. ducky. No, but yeah. thanks for being my rubber ducky. Yeah, I, because that's you, like... didn't, you didn't fail completely. Maybe two more times, not ten, uh, like Maurits. But uh, if you explain it twice more, um, I'm, I'm going to get it. But Maurits, Maurits got a ten-minute version. I think you, when I look at the timer now, you got a forty-minute version. Okay, so that's good. I'm, two or three more privileged. times. Excellent. <laughs> You're welcome, and everybody okay. else as well. Thanks, Erico, for working on that and keep yeah. doing that. And thanks, Victor, and thanks all the other people, yes. people at the Innsbruck Sprint and, and online. Yes. Yeah. Bye-bye. Bye, people.